Prelude. Tears. Tear of House Clennans looked at his reflection in the desk screen, changing it to reflective mode. He clearly was of the noble class, with his definite feline cast to his features. The commoner's features were far more plain and easy to distinguish, as the royals decreed centuries ago. He stood a little over two full measures tall, and was lean and well-muscled as he kept himself in good physical condition. It was more than just pride that he kept in shape. He wanted to be ready in case the tides turned, and physical action would be required to protect his home, life, and family. He felt he should be constantly prepared, and so had an isolated home, which was well-armed and defended. His weak dreamer talent gave him no clues to work with to further hone his preparations. He felt he couldn't abandon Kamar with the rest of his family here. He'd have to stay and fight. He looked back to his reflection. His ears were neat and rounded at the top, covered with his body fur and dyed with dark stripes and white stripes to accent his own natural medium brown fur colour. He thought they looked dashing, even if he wasn't seeking a new mate. And his dark gold eyes practically sparkled. His nose was properly flattened, but not too wide, nor too low a dip. And his upper lip split was even and neat when he grimaced at himself as he smiled. He looked at his claws, which he always kept sheathed, as was proper. He extended them to ensure they were all properly sharpened, with no splitting to indicate new growth. His hair was long, neat, and swept back. He kept it secured at the base of his neck with a bejeweled filigreed clasp to keep it out of his face and out of the way. Overall, he approved of himself, and yet knew he yearned for something more. He had no idea what that more might contain. He dialed back his screen to get back to work. He had reviewed the schedules for shipments of his share of the family's mercantile business and found no flaws. He just started delving into the captain's reports to see if any new troubles were brewing. His brows knit as he saw what was being voiced and yet left unsaid in the reports before him. Ta. A very familiar voice sounded from the door of his office as she peeked her head around it. Her curling, flame-red hair spilled down towards the floor in a careless cascade. Tear was surprised, but smiled, his heart lightened by this unexpected visit. He blanked his screen and stood to quickly cross the large room and pull his oldest daughter into the room and into his arms. "'I have missed you so much, Tyra!' he exclaimed, she clung to him for a long moment, as if clinging for dear life itself. This alarmed him, but unless she opened up to him from within, he was not going to barge in and further abuse her, using his talent. The rest of his former wife's family had their way too freely with her for years already. He wouldn't add to her burdens. It was so much for a young one to bear. She would have to open up to him from within first. Come. And let us sit and chat for a bit, he offered instead. She surrendered to his urging and let him lead her over to his comfy chairs and settee near the floor-to-ceiling windows. The garden outside was in full bloom, presenting an astounding vista which drew her eyes for a few heartbeats. The sweet smells of the blooms drifting in through the open windows. This was the garden where he had watched over her as she explored the outside world for the first time. She had grasped the bright flowers and seemingly unable to decide what she wanted to do with them once she'd crushed them in her tiny hands. Echoes of her loving laughter still filled his mind. He saw memories appear to cross her sight too, and then she blinked, sighed, and turned back to him as she took her seat. He gave her a nod and a small smile, sitting down next to her on the settee. I saw a loaf in. Did you know it won't be long now before his talent will open up? She asked, mischief in her eyes as she diverted his questions. He frowned, wondering at her moods today. She was outright mercurial. He has been tested several times now, and the catalysts have all said he is talentless. That is why he was given to me to raise. He replied, closely watching her, 
The gleam of mischief fled her eyes as she leaned towards him, placing her delicate hand upon his wrist. You must send him away from Kamada. His mind and spirit are in great danger, and he must never return. There were flashes of anger in the depth of her emerald eyes, which surprised him. My own catalyst talent has told me the truth just a few moments ago, she insisted. I do not care what any other catalysts might claim. Can you guess why? she queried. He frowned for a few moments. Then a horrible thought came to light, and a shock ran through him as it was clarified. He has empath, he breathed out in surprise. She smiled sadly in response as she nodded agreement. Kamar will kill him. Whenever I must come home, I keep my own empath talent locked down tight. Kamar is cruel, grasping and a destroyer. That is why I felt his budding talent so strongly. It echoed my own, soul to soul. I can awaken it in him, but not here, not on Kamar. He sighed in relief, knowing she had never been cruel to anyone. It was why he had always been driven to protect his first daughter every chance he got. So, you did not come all this way to talk about Elofin, since you didn't know he was an empath until today. What troubles your heart, my beautiful Tyra? How can your old da brandish his sword in your service? He teased. That brought out a warmer smile, lighting her eyes once more, but still sadness shadowed her face. His heart went out to her, wanting to know what troubled her so greatly. Word has gotten out that I am a talent of one, and now the great houses are vying to lay claim to me in any way they each can, before the crown is officially informed and can decide the rest of my life. Somehow Grandmother has decided that it, it is time I marry, she told him, then paused as her voice caught, unable to pass a lump in her throat. He took her hand in his, noting her claws were halfway out, a sure sign of her great distress. A talent of one was extremely rare, and was an occurrence in the bloodlines once every twenty thousand years. It wasn't that she had one really strong talent. She actually had been born with all fourteen talents. In Tyra's case, none of her talents were strong. But still, the potential for her to pass this unique genetic makeup onto her children made her invaluable, and someone to be treasured. If the families had their way, she would spend the rest of her life caged and out of everyone's reach. But whomever the crown felt worthy to see her, or speak with her. You are barely sixteen years old, he declared, his anger rising. You should be deciding what to wear at the next party, not your wedding. She suddenly threw herself into his arms and the floodgate of tears she'd been holding back opened. She cried out her heart to him. He held her, wondering what he could truly do to protect her from the other side of her family. It wasn't like he was powerless. His own family status even sat closer to the crown than his former wife's. But he didn't want his family elders meddling further in her life either. He pulled back to look into her emerald eyes once again. He is old, da, ancient, she sobbed. Why would Grandmother ever pick such an arrogant, self-involved, creepy old? He saw she struggled for more fitting, descriptive words, without drawing from common, offensive slang. I get the idea. Who is this fell ancient ancestor Lynn has chosen for your first mate? Walmus of House Ofterin, she replied, wiping at her tears in distress. He gave her his pocket kerchief, and she flashed a brief twitch, which might have once been a smile in gratitude. It was like lead hit his stomach upon realising whom she spoke of as her chosen mate. He could not believe his ears. He is as old as your great-grandmother. What is going through Lynn's mind? You are only a child. It has to be part of some debt between the two houses. He knew Almus would use and abuse her horribly. He suddenly stood up, feeling a need for immediate action, and not knowing what he needed to do first. Who would know you came here? He suddenly asked, turning to look at her. Mother is a strong dreamer, she stated with a lopsided smile. Remember? But she is the one who suggested I had not walked in your gardens in years. She seemed to gain strength by seeing him ready to take action. He wouldn't disappoint her now. 
He cannot be my first star, please. She stopped and frowned. Knowing Mardo was a willing conspirator seemed to ignite his own courage, as the rest of her daring plan crystallised. Since we already have a family emergency and need to evacuate Elofin from Kamar, I would like to invite you to accompany me upon the Margiti. Then you can help open his talent and coach him best in its use, he suggested. It would be my honour to lend a hand to save Elofin, she formally replied smiling so that her eyes lit up from within once again. He is my half-brother, after all. Family first. He smiled as he returned to his desk to get things set into motion. It was his own family motto. Da, where do we go now? She asked, after they had finally freed the ship from Victory Starport. She set her helmet into a storage compartment, followed by her gloves. She'd change into a ship suit soon, and stow the rest of her spacesuit disguise later. Elofen went back to his own cabin to change. He'd been charged by the thought of heading out on a voyage instead of having to go to class, and had been a willing conspirator. Grandmother Lynn will find us eventually, she pointed out. He grimaced with a nod of understanding. Normally I would agree. But if we are going to put you beyond her and Walmus's reach, we'll need help. He sighed and was suddenly reluctant to reveal his plans, which, in hindsight, seemed inadequate. She nodded her agreement, puzzled. And? She pressed, spreading her hands in invitation, as Marder liked to do at times. We're heading out to a lightly colonised world named Tainer, he finally told her. Her brows knit as it seemed she didn't understand his reasons, nor reluctance to speak about it. First to see if a loafin could be accepted into a Forrester program. It would give him a new life on a new world with potential for him to build a solid future. Then we will see if you can be hidden away for a few years in cold sleep by an order of women established by Doran of House Forentel. They have a hidden encampment where she serves out her sentence for a serious crime. Lynn would never find you there, and Walmus would never be allowed to make his claim on you. She nodded, smiling, and closed her eyes. She was still for several long heartbeats, but finally she opened them and smiled for him. He sighed in relief. Not the most ideal environment, but yes, I will be safe from them there. She finally agreed. Inwardly, a chill held her heart captive at the scenes she had just glimpsed of her future, thanks to her visionary talent. Elofin will have a good long life and will be serving the Crown Prince, she told him with a happy smile. She stepped closer and threw her arms around him, snuggling close. I will miss you, Da. It will be a short goodbye. We'll be together again soon, and I should have my family ready to help protect you from Lynn and her plans by then, he assured her. She nodded her head at this in agreement. By the time I leave Doran's company, Grandmother Lynn will no longer have the power to direct my life, she stated confidently, thinking it was the best way to assure her father as tears started up again. Do not cry, Tyra. It will all work out, he said, trying to comfort her. He gave her a handkerchief to use. She grasped it and nodded against his chest, then pulled back. They are happy tears, Dad. I am going to find my one, and only there, and he will have a good heart which is filled with lots of love for me and our family. He signed in relief and gave her a hug. He had better be a man I would approve of for my daughter, he told her. She laughed and nodded her head, still crying. He will be, she assured him. He never knew they were also tears she cried, because... She now knew she would never see her father, nor mother again, in this life. Sometimes talents could be a curse, as well as a blessing. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. You can check out our website for all the content we produce. Clicking all those YouTube buttons makes it so you see more content from myself and the other amazing creators at Kai's Corner Productions. All donations help us produce more stuff like that for you. See you guys in the next one. Peace.